Tonight we're going to learn how to make a ordinate dimensioned model inside SOLIDWORKS 2019. We're going to start with looking at our model. We already analyzed the features of this model and we created a little list for ourselves of things that we know about it. We know that we're going to use inches as our unit of measurement. We have the overall dimensions right here, three and a half by two and a half by 0.725 tall. There's a 0 0.300 step in it all around. We've got two chamfers, each is different, two fillets, each is different, a slot, a half circle notch at the top middle. A and F, these are tagged holes with a chart that we got to look at. A and F are through holes. B and G are blind holes, there's B, there's G. And we gotta look over here to figure out, or look down here to figure out what depth they are. And the material is mild steel, it says mild steel or aluminum, they don't care what we make it from. So if we wanted to, we can even assign material to it. So we have our list of things we're gonna do, we have our drawing. I'm gonna end up minimizing this drawing and opening it up and minimizing it constantly so that we, you can stay with me when I do this video. So the first thing we do is start a new drawing. New. It's going to be a part file. I'm going to hit OK. I'll double click. Doesn't matter which. It is, because I've already been in, in this product, it's an IPS mode already. Inches, pounds, and seconds. If I want to edit my dimension style, I do it right there make sure I'm, I'm in the correct units of measurement. So there's the inches. Dual dimensioning length, obviously millimeters, but everything's in inches as primary numbers. I'm gonna hit okay, so we're in the correct units of measurement. First thing I like to do after that, or the second thing technically, is turn on my planes. So I go ahead and do that. How I can pick them all at the same time? If I click on the first object, hold my shift key down, pick on the last object, it'll pick all three planes at the same time. If I leave my mouse there, not move it away, my little icon will appear where my little dialog box will appear with my icon for the eye, all seeing eye. Turn that so it turns on. Then I click away and I know everything's active. Remember the front plane, right plane, top plane is subjective. It's all about your perspective. The key is to, I like to say, respect the cube right here. So the cube, the isometric cube, that's considered the front, this is considered the right, and this is considered the top. So when we look at our part, uh-oh. Hopefully I didn't delete it. There it goes. If I look at our part, this is the primary view. This particular drawing has a primary view and a sectional view. The sectional view, one can argue, is also the front view. The section AA is technically the front view. And this primary view of all things is the top view. I would build it this way, not because of that, as much as because I know how a um, CNC works. And I'd want to position this part to make it CNC friendly. And that would mean that I would want it So that my, which way guys, how should I want it? X, Y, does it matter? If I click on that plane, you see my X, Y? The orientation? Our C and C's, our X, Y, and Z is up, correct? X is straight up, or is it Y straight up? So Z is straight up, so this guy is straight up. So then, when we look at this, we actually want to build our part on the front plane, our primary plane, because the Z axis is out. So that we actually would start this part on the front plane, because Z axis is out, and that's when it gets transferred to a CNC, it'll sit flat on a CNC. So back to this drawing, it's, uh, what do we say? We have our notes. 
Overall dimensions are three and a half by two and a half by 0.725. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to make an object in this plane that is going to be those dimensions. Because everything seems to be centered, I'd rather work with center rectangle instead of off a corner. Okay, guys? The reason I'm making that decision is when you look at this thing, it is centered. Everything is symmetrical. There's a symmetry to this part. If you, if you, it is third angle projection because it's in inches, yes. Third angle versus first. Should I instead start at zero, zero because of this? You see where the zero, zero is? So we're not going to make it from the center. Instead, we want it from the corner. So this, because what is this spot right here in the middle? What dimension is that in, in geometry? That's two zero zero. So if we want to be consistent, we would do that. So that is our zero zero. So instead of starting in the middle because of symmetry, we're going to start in the corner because that's how the client is presenting us with this project. They've got a zero, zero from the corner. It'll be, be much easier to dimension this. Now, for dimensioning, if I'm going to smart dimension this, I have some choices. Notice what choices I have. I do have horizontal ordinate dimensioning, and I do have vertical ordinate dimensioning. I don't need to use the traditional horizontal dimension or vertical dimension. Whatever method of dimensioning I use here, it will directly translate to my detailed drawing. Whatever dimensioning method I use here, it will directly translate into my detailed drawing. So if I already have my drawing set to ordinate dimensioning, what should I use here? Ordinate dimensioning. So if I go for horizontal, I pick this wall, so there's my zero. I pick this wall. And I've got what? This position. Oops. I picked 90 degrees. Sorry. There you go. I picked zero and then I picked the end, end vertical line. I picked this vertical line as my zero and I picked the next line, the 3.18. What real dimension do I want that to be? 3.5. It is in third angle projection. Don't worry. Next, I've got my vertical ordinate dimension. I've got this position, which is my zero. Then I have this position, which is going to change to 2.5. Okay? Then I'm ready to extrude this. I jump over to features. I don't have to exit the sketch mode. I can just straight jump over to features, go to extrude. It'll throw me in this mode. So my primary view is my front view, and my front view has the most features in it, so everything is good. The thickness is 0.725. That is the thickness of this part. Okay? So now I've got everything is uh, aligned correctly to ordinate dimensioning. I'm in alignment with the way the customer has cho chosen to show me this primary view. Do I want to extrude it down because of this? Yeah. Are, is it negative values or what are they using in here? They have this as the zero position because the, the tool is going to be, the surface is zero and the tool is cutting into it. But the product will be up in the zero position. I, I know. That's a kept, you know what? I'm going to say that's a preference. Okay. The tool. And picture the model is sitting on top of the surface. That's how I'm going to let it be. Right. But I agree with you. In, in, a, in an interesting way, I would agree with you. The only reason I, I don't want to do it is because positive Z is out this way, negative Z is in the other direction. Okay. And the XY, you're, you're identifying positive numbers when you're cutting in. My machinists, is it positive numbers or negative numbers? Positive or negative numbers for cutting into a, a part? Negative. negative? Okay, so in that case, we're going to flip it. 
I, I agree with you. So I'm going to flip it. So how do we flip it? Oh, gosh darn it. So I've extruded a part out, and now I need to change the direction of my extrude. A simple answer is delete it and redraw it. No, that's not the simple answer. First thing you do is click on the object, and you have a set of options above this. This is edit sketch. Remember edit sketch is with, with the backwards J, I like to say, and with the pencil. The other edit option, anytime there's a pencil involved, that's an edit in SolidWorks, just to give you an idea. So if you see an icon with a pencil on top of it, that's an edit, whatever it is, edit. So we're gonna edit the model, the extrusion itself, and we're gonna flip the direction. We're going to flip the direction. We're going to reverse. They use the word reverse. We're going to reverse the direction of the cut. You see that? We're going to reverse. Whee! Got it? Whee! So that's it. That's all you have to do is reverse the direction of the cut. This little box reverses the direction. It doesn't care which way, it's just reverse. So if it extruded one way and you don't like it, you want to extrude it the other way, just click on that box and it'll extrude it the other way. So you don't have to worry about a positive or a negative value. That's this right here. The, the, the thickness of the physical object is defined by this, D1, the depth of the object. If I change the direction, it still uses the same word, depth. Doesn't matter which way you're flipping it. It actually jumps into the feature itself. When you when you hit OK, this is a product. I created my sketch, I jumped over to features, and immediately got into that. I don't have to exit sketch mode to jump into extrude mode. I can jump straight to it. Okay, that's the nice part. Next, so we extruded it correctly. So Sochi. Ding! One for one, a point for you, right? Next, we're going to make hmm, an interior shape. My, my whittle, whittle away mentality tells me I should probably make an interior rectangle of some kind and slice that out and then start working on the features, the corners, the radiuses. So I start with this big block and then I'm going to cut around here another rectangle that we know is 0.3 deep but we didn't identify what size that ledge really is. From what I can tell it's 0.25, there it is, there's 0.25 right here, where my mouse is moving. That tells me this position, 0.25 is over here, that tells me this position for this vertical corner. If I jump over to this side, this is 3.25 is this position. And 3.5 is that position, so the difference, if I subtracted one from the other, is also 0.25 because 3.5 minus 3.25 gives me a quarter inch. And then up here, I have 2.25 and 2.5. And and so if I subtract 2.5 minus 2.25, my ledge parameter, perimeter, sorry, perimeter is a quarter inch. That was missing from my notes. I got the step all around but I didn't identify that it was a quarter inch ledge all around. Got it? It's a quarter inch ledge. So to do that, go back to SolidWorks. I'm going to pick my face. I'm going to create a new sketch. And I'm going to do something called offset entities. I'm going to go to normal too so I can look at this head on and I'm going to undo what I just did. I'm in my sketch. I have my face highlighted. See it? See how it changes? When I'm away from my object and I click away from it, you see how it's subdued? It's just a gray color. The minute I click that face, it lights up. 
See that? I'm going to pick offset entities, offset entities. When I click on this, you'll notice that it gives me an offset dimension. We want an offset of a quarter inch, yes? Because yep. that's our ledge. Our perimeter ledge space is a quarter inch. But look, it took that yellow line that represents where it's going to go. That yellow line is away from the object. I want it inside the object. So I have to put in reverse. I click on reverse. If I don't like that, I could do bi-directional. I want reverse. Bi-directional will be halfway. Halfway out, halfway in. You want me to put a negative sign? Negative 25. It automatically selects reverse. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, that's 0.25 inches. Point, I'm sorry, that was 25 inches. Negative 0.25. Let me get on it. I think you have to click it. You have to click reverse. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't say minus. You just have to pick 25 and pick reverse. Is that a question? No. So we hit OK. And voila. So did I go ahead and draw an actual rectangle and put a bunch of dimensions in? And, oh my god, that's too much work. Did I do that? No. My boss isn't paying me to mess around with this product. They're paying me to produce drawing. Get her done. So I take the path of least effort. Offset will be your friend. Trim will be your friend. Chamfer will be your friend. These are all commands you're going to absolutely love as time goes on. Draw will be very you will be used in a very limited manner. The majority of your of your time will be over here in trim and the modify tools. The power of the software is in modify. The power of the software is not in drawing. Let's go to isometric real quick. Look at that. Look, looking pretty good. We're going to jump to features. And we're going to remember that SolidWorks will not warn you if you accidentally pick extrude balls. You have to intentionally select extrude cut. When we pick extrude cut, it naturally picked that inside shape. And you're going to be like, no, I don't want to cut on the inside of my object. I want to cut on the outside of my object. The way to cut on the outside of your object is the flip side to cut. Visually, nothing changed. I do not like the fact that they made that revision. I like the old way where it actually did visually change. The only thing that visually changes is a little arrow pops out. So if I turn that off, the arrow's inside. Watch. Nothing up my sleeves. I don't have sleeves. See that? Out. In. See it? Just watch this little arrow right here. Let me zoom in, close up to that little dude. I can't move the constraint there. See that dude right there? Get it? Oh, got it. That's it. Now, how deep the cut needs to be, we certainly don't want it to go all the way. We want it to go a depth of 0 0.300. And that's exactly what it will do. See that? See where that little yellow line? That yellow line represents how far down it's going to slice. When I hit OK, <laughs> That's what I get. It cuts only the outside. Why? Remember, the key to that working is flip side to cut. Inside versus outside. That's the key. Make sure that little arrow is pointing in the correct direction for what you're trying to achieve. If I go to normal too, it's probably easier to see it head on. See that arrow sticking out there? Woo! You go this way, it's going to cut the inside. It's going to cut the core. You want it to jump out to cut and make, create an outside ledge. That's what you have to remember. It's where that arrow is. Then you hit OK, and voila. You get what you want. Okay, next. 
We've got chamfer here. We have a chamfer here. Chamfer, however we pronounce it. We have a half circle cut here. And we have little holes and a slot. We've made these before. Let's do them. Did we do chamfers yet? No. Nope. So let's do that. So I'm going to minimize that so it looks really clear. Not all right, let's do that. <laughs> we can see what we're looking at. All right, let's start with the lower right corner. Why? I'm sorry, lower left corner. Hello. Why? Because I did. I don't care. It's random. You choose to, to do whichever one you want. I don't care. But I'll, I need a calculator? No, 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 I'm too lazy for that. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no. Okay, we're gonna figure this out, don't worry. Good question though, how do we make the, the chamfer? So let's jump into chamfer, which is under the fillet chamfer family. Seems every software product I've ever worked with has fillet and chamfer together. Mm -hmm. They just do. So when I go to chamfer, on the left side will be all my options. It is relatively visual, which is nice. So what information am I given? I'm given the delta x position, so it's from zero to there. I'm given the no. I don't. Uh, I don't have a. I don't need a delta y. I have the angle, right? So basically, if I pick this edge, there's this this dimension. We're going to use this method right here. I'm going to pick my edge. I've got my distance. Now, what do I know? My distance is what? It's 1.125 minus, now I have to compensate. 0.25? 875. Well, here's your zero position, right? And a quarter inch to here. And this position is 1.125. You're correct. You're giving me the final answer. And I'm giving you a method. <laughs> so if I take 1.125, I want to subtract. I want to comp for this. So I'm going to subtract 0.25. I'm going to change my angle, though. What's my angle? 30. Are they in the correct order? Notice what it's doing? Do you think it'll come out the right way? Nope. Now there's my distance. See where my, my purple arrow is? That's my linear distance. And the second item is my angle. If I hit OK, if I'm done with this, which I am, there are my two items. That point, point one, point two. See the, this arrow defines where my length of my cut is, not where my angle is going. Tangent, propagation, full preview, no preview. Let's do a preview. Now does it make more sense if you did a full preview? See how that full preview shows us where the cut's going? It's going the correct direction. Notice, if I did not have the correct direction angle relationship, I'll just flip them. Flip, you see that? Flip, flip, get it? That's what you use, okay? Everything is in here. You can also type the information in here. I didn't have to type it right on the screen. I could have said 1.125 minus 0.25. Gotten the same answer, 0.875. I could have used a calculator on the side, but I'm too lazy. I don't carry a calculator around. It's attached to my phone. I don't want to jump over here and go uh, calculator. That, you know, right there. Don't need it. Oops. Uh, I haven't tried that. <laughs> but I can answer most most 
vector equations in here without caring about sine or cosine? I know the length of the sides. I can answer the question. Length and angle, that's all I need. Okay? So there we go. We hit OK. Done. Next. Orbit this about. Jump over here. Uh, come on, you. There we go. Scooch over. There we go. All right, now we got this dude. This is the other side, the other corner. So we go to chamfer, pick that edge, and what do we got here? What's the distance? 3.5 minus, am I doing the right number or am I using the wrong number? Three point huh? Three point two five minus two point eight one two five. Eight one two. Oh, it didn't give me the last one. All right. Three point two five minus two point eight one two gives me the difference, which is exactly what we want. And then the angle is forty. Okay. Same thing, if I, didn't want, if I didn't like the position, go ahead and flip it. See that? It did pick the right spot, but that's random. That wasn't by design. I picked the same edge, it just picked the vertical edge. When you pick the vertical edge, that's what it's going to affect. Don't pick the side walls. Do not pick the side, like some people want to pick this wall and no, stop that. Don't pick any walls, just pick the edge. See that? You see what's in blue? The only thing you pick is the edge that you wipe out. You don't, like in AutoCAD, you pick the two connecting lines to affect it. You don't do that in this product. You pick the, the thickness, that edge that represents what you're removing. When you hit OK, it's gone. There you go. That's chamfer inside SolidWorks. The holes you know how to do, are, it's just a function of location, location, location. And the hardest thing to do is reading where those locations are. Not all the locations are here. Yeah, they're there. Some, some content is over here. But it's also repeated over here, I think. No, F is not repeated here. C, D, and E, C is not identified. There's C. It's at location 1.75 in the X direction and 2.25 in the Y direction. So, and we can do that one. Let's do that one. That one is an odd, odd item. Now, remember what I taught you about whole wizard. Pick the face first. Pick the face first. Pick the face first. By the way, pick the face first. Then go to whole wizard. Okay, this one's going to be a another legacy hole because the diameter is 0.45, so it's an odd number. So the diameter is going to be 0.45. Is that diameter or radius, guys? Dimension C, what are they giving us? Radius, so it's 0.45 divided by 2. See that? The depth of the... Ooh, seriously? I can't? I can't, I can't plug it, oh, no, nope, well, okay, there's a limitation. You have to do the math on the side for that one. Let me see if I put an equal sign. No, no, don't do it. Oh, 0.45 times, it doesn't matter what I put, it still won't work, see? I'm glad that you noticed that I typed the wrong numbers in, thank you for that. But it's really times two, not divided by two. You know, is that whether I put a multiplier or a divider, it doesn't matter. It doesn't take a math equation in that box. So I have to type it in. 0 0.9, 0 0.90. And the depth is what? The same depth. It's not a through all. What's the, it's a blind hole. The depth is 0 0.300. Zero. Because it's, it's flush with my ledge. It's flush with my ledge. 
Okay, now will you work? Thank you. Now let me try just, just to annoy myself because I like to do that. Okay, it took it this time. So it must have been something else that was giving it the error. It I, change the change down here, over here. Look up on the big screen where you see where it says through all. Change it to blind. Blind hole, I think that was the actual yeah. problem, the blind hole reference. So it, it will take the 0.45 times two. But you know what? I still want to go the other way just because I want to make a mistake. <laughs> I just want to make a mistake. I want to break the toys. I want to see how to fix it. So now the question is, where am I going to drop this thing? No, you don't want to follow me with that mistake. You want to do it right here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, because I'm going to fix that mistake by the end of this video, okay, guys? Don't worry. I dropped it right on the edge, and now I'm done with it. I want to go and smart dimension it, and its position is 1.75. So from here to its center, it's 1.75. I like that. Should we continue with the mistake? Yeah, no. You do yours right. We're going to hit OK. As far as the other dimension Y, the 2.25, do I really need to locate the 2.25? No, because what is it? I'll do it. I'll actually show you what it's going to warn me. If I pick this dimension and I go out here, I'm going to get an error message that says, hey, adding this dimension will make the sketch overdefined. We'll throw it in there, but we'll put it in as a reference, a driven dimension, which means it goes in with little, um, like grayish. See the color? So if you ever see gray dimensions on your drawing, and then you see really bright colored dimensions on your drawing, solid black dimensions on your drawing, the gray ones are reference dimensions. The solid black ones are real dimensions that you check, that you can affect. Okay. So you don't need that dimension in there. I'm going to hit escape, sorry. Okay, out of that. Whoa, I did it too fast, sorry. I made a mistake. I went too quick. There we go. First thing I want to do is eliminate this dimension. Just hit the delete button and get rid of it. I'm going to, yeah, click on the object and delete. I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to realize my, my flaw that that cutout, that nibble is too small. It needs to be much larger. So I'm going to fix it. The way to fix it, just like with everything else, go back to your model tree, click on the object, and edit the feature. Okay? Go to positions and look at is it positions or type? It's type. Down here we have to correct the value and change it to, what was the dimension? 0. 0.45 times 2, not divided by 2. Okay? We hit Enter, and we hit OK, and everything's good. So if we make the mistake of using a wrong dimension, you can go back and fix it by editing that line item, that item off your model tree over here on the left side. Cool? Next. I gotta make a few mistakes, but thank you for catching them. <laughs> uh, um, all right, now what? These guys, position A, B, F, and G, and then we've got the slot, which is actually centered. But D and E are dimensioned over here, correct? Dimension D and dimension E. So when we go pick the face first, pick the face first. Pick the face first. Then we go back to whole wizard. And do we have a slot option? Let's find out. We've got counter board, counter sink, hole, legacy hole. We've used that enough times. Tapered hole, straight holes, straight tap holes. That means it's threaded. Counter board slot. Okay, we're getting closer. Counter sink slot and a good old slot. So we're there. So when I pick on slot, 
What what uh, hole sizes are these? 0.1875. So we have to find out which drill bit we're going to use. So what's 0.1875? I'm going to show decimal value so you can see that. This is why it's important to remember the fractional values of your stuff. Not for math class or for my engineering graphics class, but for this class. Because <laughs> the software uses fractions by default. Three sixteenths. Okay? And then uh, slot length, how long is it? From E to D, E to D. So it's 0 0.75 to 1.5, which means it's a, when we subtract one and a half, position, position, one of the positions is at three quarters of an inch, the other position is at one and a half. So the difference is, is the length of the slot. Is it three quarters, guys? 1.5 minus 0.75, okay? Or what could I do? Got it. End condition, is it going to be a blind hole? Whoops. 1.5 minus 0.75, correct? You're not accepting math? I love when I find the, the limitations of a product. I live for these moments. Point <laughs> seven five. All right, we'll just do that. Did you notice that I wasn't taking the math? I wonder if I put an equal sign in there. Equals one point five minus point seven five. Do you think that? No, no. You see that? See that? See that error message? Okay. Now what's annoying is that it didn't give me that error message when I simply had that. One point five minus point seven five, and hit enter. It just made it 1.5. Be very careful about that one. What do you think I should do? Nope. What's annoying though, do you notice that it didn't give me an error message? Did, did anybody see an error message jump? No. The only time the error message jumped in there is when I did this. I did 1.5 minus We'll use the zero in it, 0 0.75. Wow. Now the question is, will it do it right? I'm going to bet that it's not, but I'm not, I'm not going to bet money on it. <laughs> but I wonder if it's going to come up. Let's find out. OK, so there's the slot dimensions. And now we're going to go to position. Position is which, oh, you see? It didn't work. It, it kept the 1.5. You notice that? Even though I did not get an error message. It's wrong orientation. That's correct. So let's go back to type. Uh, whoops, it started changing. 0.1875, right? The slot length is 0.75. Say again. You're correct. I gave a radius of 0.1875. And the slot size is really the diameter. You're correct. It's 3 eighths. Okay, this is still 3 quarters. Are we there yet? End condition is going to be blind or through all? And where is it going to stop? Point 0.5. You got it. Point 0.500. Zero zero. Okay. There's nothing in here about orientation, horizontally or vertically. So when we go to position, it wants to just drop it. So 
So how do I fix that? So I hit escape. I've got my first object. You drag this dimension up. This isn't clearly identified, but I have the option to make it vertical right there. Horizontal, whoa, I can't. Once I apply that constraint, I can't apply a different one. Did you see that? Let's do that one more time. It's right here. If I click on the center line that belongs to it, right now, you see how it says make horizontal? I want it to be vertical. That's how you change that. This I still have to locate correctly because I can't just drag it anywhere. That's, that's a no-go. So I've got to put in an ordinate dimension, right? I applied the constraint of vertical to it. We're going to do ordinate dimensioning. That's going to be our zero position right there. And this is going to represent what position? 1.75. That was close, but no cigar. Next, the Y position is based on where? Item D, the Y position is 1.5. So let's see if we could drop in a vertical position from here to this one's not going to be so easy. It doesn't see the arc at all. It only sees the center point. And if you notice the 0.75, you see the position of where the 0.75 is? It's from, it's from the outside edges of my radii, not from the center which is absolutely horrifying. <laughs> if I go back to type, I don't get the option of how to show this at all. So I'm going to say that using a whole wizard for making slots is probably a bad decision. The reason I'm going to say that to you is because of the way that it makes it. Do you see those positions? You, t you literally have to add for what? For where the real radii are. Because position 0 0.75, this 0 0.75 length is really the difference between 1.75 and 1.5, which means it's supposed to be center to center, not tangent arc to tangent arc. So it's a bad, bad command. So we don't use it. Instead, we're going to go to making a sketch. Not editing a sketch, sorry. I picked the wrong tool. We're going to make a sketch. We're going to pick the space. We're going to create a sketch. And then in here, we have straight slots. When we pick this command, which we've done before, this is much more logical. Don't ask me why they programmed the other one the other way. Now do you see how that bar is actually what? The way it's supposed to be. This bar is supposed to represent the centers of the arcs, not the tangency points of those arcs. Now when we drop in our dimensions, our vertical positions, for example, and we pick this one, and then we pick this one, see that? Now we can actually identify, this is at what location? Dimension E in the Y direction is 0 0.75. Dimension D in the Y direction is 1.5, correct? And then we do the next one, which is horizontal. So we go from here, and then we just want the center, correct? And this one is 1.75. Did we even care how wide the slot is? Did we need to know the point? Did we need to see the difference? The 0.75 was wrong anyways, because it was going to give us the wrong 0.75 dimension. 
would you click on first when you clicked on the vertical coordinate and doesn't matter which way I go. I could do vertical first and then horizontal, or horizontal first and then vertical. You can select anywhere on the Bingo. Yeah, as long as you're right on the edge. When you drop the zero, then your next, it's like boom, boom, boom. Whatever you want. Doesn't matter which order. So, for example, to give you, if I did this zero here, and let's say I picked this one first, and then I picked this one, it wouldn't care. It wouldn't screw anything up because it's, it knows to start at zero. So it sees this before it sees whatever else you're doing. Because that's your first thing. Where's my anchor? Where's my zero? And then everything is assumed after that. So that's it. That's that position. Then we jump over to features. Shall we extrude cut or extrude boss? Cut. Oh, just for fun, let me pick the wrong one. <laughs> and just go through. Because I know it's going to actually warn me, right? Sure it is. Not. Ixnay on the warning end. No warning. Did you notice that? Fully into the part. 100%. Did not choose to warn me, hey, yo, do that. You're putting it in the wrong spot. Does Inventor warn you about that? Oh, yeah. Inventor, if you flip it, it actually turns into a cut. Oh yeah, just want people to know what, what's different about products. I like to break things. <laughs> so in this case, this is the wrong choice. So this is an example of where I will delete the object, but I don't want to delete the absorbed features because I want to keep them. I just want to delete the extrude, not the feature. Get it? This is an example where I want to keep the feature, I'm sorry, the sketch even though I delete the feature. I said that the wrong way, so hopefully I corrected myself there. Uh, I forgot, let's try it again. There we go. When you click the feature, which is the extrude, right mouse button and I hit delete. This is an example, you know what, this is annoying. They use the word all the same language, so that's why I did that. See where it says delete observed features? If I click delete observed features, it's going to delete the sketch the alignment group that I created for both of those those uh, positions. So those ordinate dimensions I dropped in, it'll delete that. I don't want to delete any of that. I just want to delete the extrude. So that's this is an example of where you don't want that on. You just say yes. That way it leaves the sketch there for you to go ahead and use the correct extrude feature. Is it blind or through? I forgot. It's blind. How do you... Point 0.5. You can throw the zero, 00, but it doesn't matter. It's still just point 0.5, okay, guys? When I hit OK, come on. Voila. There we go. Is, is this the wrong size, guys? I think I made it the wrong size. Let's go ahead. Now to fix it, you click on it, right mouse button. See the edit sketch? Let's edit that sketch. I think I'm, oh, I didn't make a mistake. I just forgot to put in a dimension. Very important one, by the way. <laughs> uh, what is dimension D and E? Their radius of 0.1875. So that is a dimension I forgot to include. The radius, 0.1875. Okay, out of it, done. Now it's correct, I think. Let's look at it head on. Does that look right? I don't know. Let's double check that. The nice part is we can measure a hundred times and cut, or we can cut ten times and measure twice. In CAD, we can't do that in, in real land. Is that radius? Radius, radius. Let's double check. 1.1875. Yeah, we're okay. That's correct. Just doesn't quite look the same, does it? Doesn't look a little different from that one? Just my opinion. Could be me. It's me. Let's see if I can make my view. Sorry. Let me close that up. I want to make my view kind of plain. Is that better? How's that? Visually a little better for you to see it? I just took out the. Uh, 
the coloring. If I go to isometric, it just looks like a big block. Is that all? Right up here. You can view it as a block, hidden lines removed. You can view it with hidden lines visible. To me, that's confusing, so I don't have that on. And my favorite, talk about confusing, wireframe. This guy's nice. It gives a soft imagery. It looks pretty. This one's nice because you also see the lines. And then this one is one I use sometimes just for clarity, to simplify the views a little bit. Depends on what I'm doing. Okay, so there we have it. The three, I'm sorry, not three, four holes are next. And we handle each one independent of the other because are they all the same? Are they all different? Yep. They're all different. So nothing's the same. So hole number A is a through hole. So I start by picking the hole lizard. Go! If I want a headache, I start with the hole lizard. But I don't want a headache. Not at this hour at night. I want life to be simple. So I'm going to pick the face first, right? Then I'm going to go to the whole lizard. Then what size is it? Uh, a 312? So a 312, so I could find that. 3125 if I really want to get picky. I hate the fact that they're not normal dimensions. Should I go with 312 meaning 3125 or what, guys? What do you think? Or should I pick? Yeah, you had that look on your face. They probably did a 312 just to make it annoying for the students. I'll go with custom diameter of the 312, right? What did you select for the whole type? It's a simple hole. I picked simple hole. And the depth is uh, blind or through all? Through all. Then we go to position, the other tab, and go to position. Then we just draw. Why did it? Hold on. Okay, hole, simple hole, 0.31, depth, hold on. Not blind, through all, position. Ooh, something's wrong. All right, let me try this one more time. Pick the face, go to hole wizard. Pick hole, legacy hole, simple hole, point three, one, two, not blind, through all, go to positions, drop it, dimension it, not regular dimensions, ordinate dimensions. Why do I keep picking ordinate, guys? Because my drawing is in ordinate dimensions. That's the reason. Whoops, I picked the wrong spot. Ordinate dimensions needs to be off the part, so that you got to be very careful with that. And then this position, what what spot is that one at? 0.65? Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to pick the next one, which is vertical. So I pick the edge of my part. I want to pick the edge of my part. And then my next position, and that one is 1.85, 1.85 based on the drawing. And that's it. Say again? Uh, that's me. I'm sorry. I should have given it to you this way. That's my fault. Sorry. Because I do work in the third dimension. If you can get accustomed to that, that's good because then you'll pick the right edge. I tilted it because I kept picking the plane instead of the edge of my part. I always want my dimensions off the edge of my part. I don't want them off a plane. Because if I ever move my part, my object will not move with it because it's dimension not to the object, it's dimension to the planes. But I can't see the edge of my part when it's in 2D. I can only see this edge of my part when it's in the third dimension, right here. Otherwise, it kept, pick, kept, keeps picking the plane instead of the edge. I could turn my planes off. That's the other solution. Get it? So there's a few ways to deal with it. So now when I look at this, what am I looking at? Are we all good? 
That looks good. If I hit OK, I'm out. If I turn my planes off, which is what you're asking me, then I can pick my edges while I'm looking at the object head on. This outline is the outline of the object. That's the solution. If I have my planes on, the problem is, you see, my plane is aligned with my object. So when I drop a dimension, it doesn't necessarily select the right, op the right item that I want to dimension off of. I always want to dimension off my part because if I move my part, I want all my dimensions to move with it. My planes never move. My part, however, can move. So I always want my objects to be, all my features and elements to be attached to the object itself. All right, that's one hole. Can you do the other three on your own? You know enough? Okay. Yes, you do. So I'm going to end the lecture here because it's like a 56-minute lecture.